Avi Loeb space. here? Avi Loeb's here. We're yeah. going to, there he is. Avi, how you doing, sir? I'm doing great. A lot of things are happening so and we much. can get to them. Yeah. Yes, if we could. Well, what's the could. latest, sir? Tell us what's going on. Well, um, the international asteroid warning uh, uh, or system organization uh, decided to monitor 3 I Atlas um, between um, November 27th and January 27th uh, with a high cadence coordinating observations throughout the globe. And that is a very positive development uh, because I recommended it. Uh, this is an organization uh, that is... Uh, uh, associated with the United Nations, and I wrote a white paper uh, that I submitted to the United Nations a couple of weeks ago, saying that uh, uh, you know we should examine uh, interstellar objects that could be a potential threat uh, to Earth, and it would be good to get as much data as possible to check whether the object maneuvers in any suspicious way or perhaps uh, releases. Uh, mini probes that may arrive at planets like the Earth. And so I'm very glad uh, that data will be collected so we can uh, uh, figure out the nature of this object. Um, in addition, uh, we have additional data that was reported um, just uh, over the month of uh, September. Uh, it was uh, uh, imaged. The, the object was imaged and uh, we could see that uh, the previous anti-tail, that was a jet that of uh, a glow that was pointed towards the sun, 10 times longer than it is wide, first uh, uh, identified uh, clearly by the Hubble Space Telescope on July 21st. Um, it, it, it was pointing in the opposite direction to uh, cometary tails that are pushed away from the sun, uh, usually uh, by the radiation pressure and the wind from the sun. This one was a jet pointed towards the sun. It wasn't clear what its nature is. And it uh, appeared during July and August. Uh, and then in September, uh, we started seeing, uh, based on new data, the tail, uh, the, the anti-tail, the jet towards the sun, changing direction to away from the sun. So. Uh, the question is why, and of course, uh, one uh, possibility is that uh, the sun-facing side uh, is releasing ices uh, uh, that uh, evaporate, so they never get uh, to live long enough, uh, those fragments of ice, in order to be pushed uh, behind the object the way that we find in comets. But somehow, as the object got closer to the sun, uh, the nature of the outflow uh, coming off it changed and uh that would be a natural origin for that but there is also a possibility if you imagine the 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 gases coming out of uh, three atlas uh, having a technological origin perhaps the object is preparing to do some kind of a maneuver and wow. changes uh, the alpha i, I mean um, at the moment um, obviously you know it would be uh, most uh, natural to assume that it's a comet uh, of uh, natural origin, but we should keep our eyes and, and check what it does. And uh, just before that, uh, that image was released, uh, or uh, several images were released uh, over the month of uh, September, uh, there was an image from August showing clearly an anti-tail that is pointed towards the sun. So uh, this happened recently. Uh, and uh, uh, we are still waiting for an image from the high rise, the highest resolution image that we can uh, get from the high rise camera on board the, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter that observed the object when it was closest to Mars. Uh, it was within uh, 30 million kilometers from Mars on October 2nd, um, 2025. And uh, the claim is because of the government shutdown, NASA is unable to release those images, which I find surprising because, uh, you know, the, the principal investigator of that camera, you know, is a professor at uh, the University of Arizona. There, there should have been uh, a release of the data to the scientific community, irrespective of whether the communications uh, office of NASA is active or not. This is a matter of science, not of public relations. And in fact, it's not good for public relations because uh, the European um, Space Agency released uh, an inferior data set uh, from a camera they had that was only 13.5 centimeters in diameter, whereas the high-rise camera is 50 centimeters in diameter. So the high-rise image is supposed to give us the the, the the 
crispiest uh, image of 3i atlas with a, a pixel uh, resolution of 30 kilometers and uh, that is better by a factor of three than uh, the image we received from the hubble space telescope for example so i'm really uh, very eager to to see it but um, we have to wait abi real quick if we could talk about a little more uh with where the object is in relation to it's almost at the point of reaching its closest point to the sun and when that date happens uh do you have any advice for folks about you know what they need to plan on doing i think that would be good yeah so um on october uh, 21st that was um, a couple of days ago uh it was um uh, in, in solar conjunction relative to earth meaning exactly on the opposite side of the sun so if if you were looking uh, at the sky that day uh, and, and seeing the sun up there, uh, you can imagine Three Eye Atlas just behind it, perfectly behind it, so we can't observe it for sure. Um, and we can't observe it throughout the month of uh, October, actually, uh, because it's so close to the sun, uh, perhaps for a reason. You know, the, if it was uh, trying to avoid us uh, noticing that it releases mini probes or doing some maneuver, that would be the perfect timing. Because uh, when it comes closest to the sun, it moves at the fastest speed. And and then uh, if you want to get a thrust from an engine, that would be the perfect timing. Because if you get the thrust in the direction of motion, uh, then uh, you gain a the biggest amount of kinetic energy, or if you do it in the opposite direction, you slow down uh, a spacecraft. And we all know about it. This is called gravitational assist from a massive object like the sun. And so that is, this week is the perfect timing for 3 Atlas to do that. And we can't look at it from Earth. Uh, and uh, uh, actually the, uh, that is a conjunction that was on 21st of October, but then a week later, eight days later, uh, it's actually arriving closest to the sun. Uh, and uh, at that point, um, you know, it will be uh, at about uh, 203 million kilometers from the sun. It will get uh, of the order of, um, you know, 100 gigawatts of power on its surface from sunlight. So that will be the hottest point in its journey. And... Uh, uh, we don't know what will happen if it's a natural comet. You know, it could, for example, disintegrate, break up, evaporate much more. Uh, so we can learn much more about it. Uh, if, on the other hand, it's technological, it will behave differently. And so we really want to watch it immediately after that. And in the first week of November, uh, there is the JUICE uh, uh, spacecraft that was uh, launched by the European Space Agency uh, that could potentially get close to it and observe it. Uh, and then uh, it will be closest to Earth, uh, actually, on December 19th. So it's interesting that, uh, you know, October 29th, when it's closest to the sun, is, is near Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the December 19th is just before a week before Christmas. Good so um, the question is, will it deliver anything unusual on, the, on those holidays? Now, Avi, um, one thing we just wanted to get into a little bit, just on some of the scientific community maybe saying that it's premature to start having these discussions saying this is possibly uh, intelligent life out there doing that and and really trying to kind of cool the jets on any predictions like that but i, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh the process of the questions that you're asking and how important that is right now in science yeah so one thing to realize is that the answer to this question has implications for the future of humanity. And uh, just think about black swan events that the intelligence agencies have to deal with. These are events that are low probability, but the implications could be huge. Uh, for example, October 7th was not anticipated by the Israeli intelligence agencies and lots of people died as a result. And so it's really important to consider seriously events that you think have a low likelihood but would have major implications. And in this case, alien technology could affect the future of all of us. And therefore, we must consider it seriously. Even though we haven't encountered it before, we just don't know how much traffic there is because only over the past decade we started detecting interstellar objects. We didn't have telescopes that can do that before. And so I suggest that we will monitor each and every interstellar object, especially those that have anomalies. In fact, 3i Atlas has 
eight anomalies. It's very big. It's a, at least a thousand times more massive than previous interstellar objects. It's also in the plane of the planets around the sun. And, you know, the chance of that happening at random is one in 500. It showed the unusual composition, uh, only 4% water. It has nickel with very little iron, the way that the industrial production of nickel alloys uh, appear. Uh, and then, um, you know, it also appeared from uh, the same direction as the WOW signal that was detected in 1977. So uh, there are definitely a lot of reasons for us to consider it seriously. You know, the chance of all of these anomalies coming together is one in uh, 10 to the power 16. You know, like each of them has a percent level or less than a percent likelihood, and there are eight of them. It's really a small probability that we will see all of these anomalies. I'm not saying it's necessarily alien tech, but I do recommend that uh, you take your vacation <laughs> early rather than later because, you know, our Maybe life... too late. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I knew Avi was going to get me with yeah. some math before we were done. The PTO might not be approved <laughs> uh, by that. <laughs> and then he threw that equation at me and my brain just about yeah. exploded. Avi, we got to go real quick. Is there a date we should know, yes or no, on this or what it is? Yeah, I believe that... Uh, by January, we should uh, have a good okay. idea about the nature of the object. Love Excellent. having you here, Avi Loeb. You're the man. Harvard professor Avi Loeb. Thank Appreciate you, sir. It. Big things to Thanks. come. We'll talk to you soon, Talk sir. again in January, hopefully. Thank you. Oh, that was a good <laughs> Right. <laughs> if no we're kidding. still here yes. and, you know, yes. all, all, all is well. Look